Well, I'm here with my friend Pat Duran, who's been the director of the 557 Restoration Project. Hi, Pat. How's it going? It's great, great. to see you again. Great to have you back. I just wanted to come and get a little update. So for people that might watch this, the way we first met is you helped the Climax engine uh, project there as we collected that and moved it to its original birthplace in Cory, Pennsylvania. And we appreciate that help. And we got to see you know, your project and we did a little video together. So I want to come back and just do a little update and see you know, where it's at today. I'm Patrick Durand and I am the project manager for the Engine 557 Restoration Company. We have just completed our 10th year in this project. Wow. This is not a paint it and send it out the door project. <laughs> You will note considerable change since you were just yes. here. The wheels weren't even under it last time I was here. Right. Well, the wheels are under it, and it's also been rolled out one time, one time. into the sunlight wow. under its, on its own wheels. Wow. Uh, that was primarily to check the height of the door. Okay. <laughs> and we had to take and about a packed. half inch off the dynamo okay. stack and, in order to fit out. We're preparing for a major event here now. Uh, which is going to be a rollout for the media. So the shop has kind of been cleaned up, if you will, and we have a it lot of really things nice. laid out for uh, demonstration purposes. So what are the major things that you're working on right now and, and this fall? The immediate goal is to put away all of those things that need to be accomplished before we can start putting the tubes and flues in the boiler. The FRA requires that those be removed and examined every 15 years. So you always put off to the last minute installing the first tube. As that engine is coming together, we'll be doing any last minute prep work that's necessary. So when the boiler makers show up, we can get that job done. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. Timing. <laughs> Uh, be finished when it'll be finished, right? Yeah, and uh, we're, we're working uh, with Robert Franson of Steam Services of America. He'll be putting together the crew that'll do ac actually install the tubes and flues in the machine. It's very gratifying to, to see, see it to this point. coming together. Yes. Because yeah. we've been working on all these sub-assemblies all these years. To see it coming together properly is very rewarding. I bet. Well, it looks fantastic, and I know you're going to take us around and show us these different parts and stuff like that. You're so close to the finish line, and this will be such a treasure uh, for Alaska and even the whole train community. Well, one realization that we're having is uh, a demonstration of what a committed community mm. can accomplish, mm. because our in-kind donors and our major vendor supporters. Yeah. It's really unbelievable how they have come through over the years. Wow. The people that have been with us from day one and are you still said here. 10 years, right? You've been working years. on this for 10 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. and a number of our volunteers were here on day one. They're still here. Right, okay. right. Okay. What's, what's the future of the project? Eventually it'll be complete. What's that look like when it is complete? How will people be able to appreciate this uh, engine when it's finished? Right out that door, mm. we laid 80 feet of track. Wow. The Alaska Railroad has on the ground out there a uh, turnout, a switch, if you will, that they plan to install this fall that will connect us to the main line. As soon as we are <coughs> capable of steaming and operating the machine, we'll move to the Palmer branch where we'll do shakedown operations probably a 10 day period where we fire up and operate it day and night. <laughs> yeah. As long as people are available. Right, right. Uh, and do, do a real shakedown on it. Yeah. And when we have decided that it's available for service, our initial negotiations with the Alaska Railroad, after all, that's who we're doing this project for, mm. the people of Alaska Absolutely. and the railroad. We would like to engage about six to eight trips in the spring before the tourist season starts, and maybe 10 or 12 trips in the fall after the tourist season, because the railroad only has so much track time during the height right. of the season. Right. And we'll be using 
they will be using our locomotive to pull their equipment. Yeah, well, I, I can only imagine seeing this, you know, moving around the area, just uh, the visuals of that will be amazing. And I'm, I'm not a really a train guy, though I've learned a little bit from some of these projects, just the, the photo video side of it, but I think that would be amazing. So well. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Well, take us around the 557 and show us some of the parts that you're working with right now and introduce us to your team, because I know uh, you have a great group of volunteers. Who's, who's with you today? Uh, I okay, think. let's just turn around right here okay. and uh, we'll start at the beginning. 557 is ready to go out the door for a major show here in the next couple of days. We have installed the smoke box front and it has a fresh coat of graphite and linseed oil. It's baked on. The headlight That's is great. up there. The marker lights are in place. The turbo generator is in place. The Harriman number boards are in place. And all we have to do is plug it in back there and they all light up. Are most of these original parts? Those are original parts as far as the Alaska Railroad installation of 557 was. Uh, when the Army built these, um, they did not have an electrical system. They did not have the turbo generator or any of the electrical lights because they were basically destined for Europe and they used uh, kerosene lamps over okay. there. And of course we have the safety first admonition right there on the front of the, the steps. That bracket that you see sticking up there on the front of the pilot beam, that mm -hmm. plate, that will be the mount for the cross compound uh, air compressor, a big Westinghouse air compressor, which we have on the floor over here for demonstration purposes. Let's, let's go over and we'll see that then. So this right here is the compressor system? This is, this is the uh, Westinghouse cross compound air compressor. Air pump is the common term for it. It stands upright and the, uh, the Steam is used twice in this compounding situation and you have two air cylinders and two steam cylinders. So um, this is the governor that controls turning the device on and off and this is the air filter assembly. You can see the size of the can on the air filter. Yeah. Give you an idea how much air it does it's move. moving through. Yeah. Okay. And <clears throat> This was totally rebuilt um, by Steam Services of America using modern uh, components. And just for reference point, that costs about $42,000 to overhaul it. Just to fix that part up. And when the locomotive was originally built in 1943, the entire locomotive cost $58,000 oh, according wow. to the Army. Wow. These are the pistons and the piston rods. Mm. The pistons are 19 inches in diameter and they have two sets of segmented rings that fit into these slots. Mm -hmm. And the, Would those be brass rings that would fit in there? They're bronze, bronze? and cast iron back okay. to back, two sets of them. Wow. And these are the piston rods. We'll be doing a cleanup pass on these to recondition them. And uh, the locomotive has a 19 inch bore and a 26 inch stroke. They look like they're in fantastic shape. Well, the, these show some fitting, but it's all surface material that, that can be cleaned know, up. That can be cleaned up. Sure. And what do we have over here? These are obviously very beautiful themselves. Okay, these are the connecting rods. And over here, we have the main rods. Okay. Uh, and then we have the, the short connecting rods that go on axles one and two. The large end of this rod connects on the uh, driving axle on the main crank pin, and the other end of it connects to the crosshead just behind the cylinder block. You can imagine what those weigh. I can't tell you because we don't waste our time weighing them. We just say heavy. <laughs> They're heavy. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And all of those bearings that you see, all the bronze parts, Yes. those are all new. Oh, wow. They look fantastic. Yeah. That's all new because they were machined specifically to fit the reconditioned pins 
uh, and okay. bushings on the drivers. That's the brake cylinder itself. Okay. And those are uh, 14 inches in diameter with a 10 inch stroke. And this is the brake cylinder here. And these were actually manufactured in Pennsylvania? Um, I see. Actually, not sure because the, the, the brake rigging there, so. was from Westinghouse and okay. that could have been imported from just about anywhere in the country. Okay. But most likely in Pennsylvania or Scranton area. Mm -hmm. Scranton, um, Pennsylvania, yeah. Donnie, just, just for interest, I want you to take a hold of the step around here. Okay. Take a hold of that and move it. Wow. Absolutely smooth. Look at that. Wow. wow is the correct word. That's the common response. And so this has all been reconditioned. That's all been reconditioned. And rebuilt. And the the following blocks that go in here originally, you could just rattle them back and forth. Right. Well, today you can you move can, this with one finger. You can move that yeah. with one finger, and it's it's dead smooth. Now, in order for the locomotive to work properly, the valve gear. Mm -hmm. And this is the heart of it. Okay. Because there's a traveling block that goes in here, slides up and down, mm -hmm. controlled by the power reverse up there okay. through this mechanism. Hmm. It lifts that. There's there's a bar that goes out through here and connects to the valve gear. And uh, any, any amount of wear that you have in the valve train is loss of efficiency. Wow. And. Uh, we had a, a local uh, uh, Morris Malonis, uh, who is with uh, Alaska Armory, does gunsmithing. Mm -hmm. He came up with the material and used his CNC technology to create these new travel blocks. Wow. And you put them in there with our, our lubricant and it'll literally slide down that channel, wow. just gravity weight. Wow, wow. We call that the snake pit under there. And when you get in close with the camera and you t take a look at all of the uh, plumbing in there, you can understand why. Yeah. All of that stainless steel fittings and tubing, that's all part of the upgrade to the 26L brake system. Mm. In order to be compatible with components of the positive train control system, we needed to upgrade to the 26L brake. Okay. And in the process of doing that, that's about $40,000 worth of new hardware wow. under there and uh, a lot of work that's been done by uh, Paul Deleska has taken that all under his wing. And, and part of those parts are from Wabtec, is that true? Yes. Okay, we have a Wabtec in Erie, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Maybe that's where the headquarters is. So what are we looking at here? Okay, now? this is referred to as the, the back head of the boiler. Uh, the firebox door is there in operation. This is an oil-fired locomotive. So there's an air box that connects over that door down to the floor so the combustion air, the primary, actually secondary combustion air comes up and into the firebox there. Uh, there are a number of components that have been installed and since removed in the process of getting ready to uh, do jacket uh, and insulation preparation to go on that back head. Um, that's one of the things about working on a steam engine. You get to do it once, and then you get to do it again, and then again. We have a saying, we only get one chance to do it right, even if we have to do it three or four times. Okay, so this weekend, these will be connected at that point. These will be connected, and the drawbar will be hung in the tender, mm -hmm. and they'll be brought together, Okay. and there'll be a fellow standing in where the air box is, and when the pin gets to the right location, He'll drop on it. The Would fuel you... is going to be used oil, okay. and U.S. Ecology tells us they're going to supply all the oil we can burn for the first two years. That's fantastic support. And the fuel bunker is there in the middle where you would normally have a coal bunker. Okay. Uh, they converted this to oil in 1954. 
the outer uh, portion of the tender and mm -hmm. the bottom there that's a water bottom tender. Okay. And uh, that holds the water for it. Wow. And the hoses you see connected there right now are all air. Uh, the water hoses are, are larger. We have them out of the way so they don't conflict with our presentation this weekend. The project would be nowhere without volunteers. We have two people that get paid on this project. Uh, one is our professional engineer consultant and that's Robert Franson. Um, the other is Paul Deluska. Paul, Paul's role is he is a consultant He's doing all this brake work, for example. Wow. He's also a machinist. So he picks up all those raw ends and helps direct where we're going with the project. And well, his experience comes from operating uh, <coughs> the Huckleberry Railroad in Flint, Michigan for a number of years. Wow. So Terry Douglas is a longtime volunteer with us. Nice to meet you, Terry. Thank you. Ron Dudley. Your hat's and, dirty, so you must have been here a while. <laughs> and Gene Augustine. I, I'm the newest one for five and a half years, so just barely half the project, so. But a <laughs> hard awesome. worker. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, it's looking really good, guys. It's looking really good. I, I see what uh, Paul was doing is hooking up the lights. If you take another walk up front, you'll find all of the lighting on the front of the locomotive. Okay is up for show and tell. And the headlights on dim, and the side markers, uh, display 557 and the uh, big Harriman number boards. X is for extra train. In other words, this train, if it was displaying those numbers in the number board, is not a scheduled train, it's an extra train. And the locomotive number awesome. follows. And the markers indicate that it is a uh, extra because they're displaying white. Well, Pat, thanks for showing us around the project and good luck as you wrap this up over the next year or, or so, whatever it takes. You've always said that, that it is, it's just gonna- It's what it is. It's what it is. It can be done when it's done, but you've yeah. done a fantastic job and it's fun to get an update. And I know people online will be excited to see this little update and see the progress. And uh, good luck too as you roll it out, hopefully this weekend if the weather cooperates so you can get some daylight on this locomotive, the 557 project. And Donnie, we always appreciate your support. And- uh, I'm gonna come ride, ride one day, right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, we please extend our, our best wishes to the uh, 313 crew back there in Cory, PA. Uh, it was really nice being able to enable, in some small degree, saving another one of Alaska Railroad's artifacts, steam locomotives, and sending it home. Well, I know they have really appreciated your help on that project as well. So thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank you.